Hey everybody, um, nice relaxing hot Sunday afternoon and <clears throat> I've been mulling over a topic for about a week now because a week ago I participated in a 12 hour mountain bike race. Um, I'll tell you right off the bat, I did not make it 12 hours. Um, <clears throat> I did not prepare. I was not physically prepared for this. Um, I mostly went and did it to hang out with my brothers for a day, which was really nice. Got to see my brother from Arizona, who's not up here very often. And so um, he and I hung out for quite a, quite a while that day, and it was really nice. But I had an incident. So um, as I mentioned, I wasn't physically prepared for really any kind of race. I'd been out mountain biking a little bit. I probably hadn't done more than five or six miles at a time over the last few weeks. <clears throat> so going for 12 hours on a 13 mile loop, I kind of had the feeling that it would not go very well. And so we took off on the first lap around, I think it was about 7 a.m. And <clears throat> it actually went really well. I was really surprised. I went longer, faster, harder than I had at all in any previous rides this summer and felt really good. Like I was really surprised. I kind of surprised myself. I was a little bit stoked about it. And um, I took a little break after the first round, the first lap of 13 and a half miles or so up at Powder Mountain. Uh, the race was called El Doce. It was put on by Goal, which is Go Out and Live. Um, I've done races with them previously. Uh, they used to do one called Hurt in the Dirt, which was a mountain bike race plus run. So it was a duathlon, which was really fun. That was a long time ago. Gosh, that was probably 15 years ago. <clears throat> so back to El Dose. Um, on the first lap, my brother and I did really well. Uh, the brother that stayed with me. Now, I have to give props to my other brother who went six laps on the day. And my 14-year-old nephew, Jackson, who went four laps on the day, a 14-year-old, did over 50 miles of mountain bike race on the day, which is super impressive to me, especially, especially once you hear the, the rest of my story. So um, the first lap went really well. I was surprised. I felt good. I went fast for me. <clears throat> I made it um, longer distances, climbed more, did better than I have on any previous ride all summer. And um, while taking a brief rest at our base camp at Powder Mountain, I was like, man, that went really well. I, I went about twice as fast as I had expected to do any particular lap. Uh, <clears throat> so in my mind, I was like, oh, I just went twice as fast. That means I should be able to do another lap, no problem. And so my brother and I took off to do another lap. And within about two miles of the 13 mile loop, I knew I was in for trouble. <laughs> and, and right about that time I crashed and ended up with some pretty fun, let's see if there's anything left. Ah, there's not much left, but um, some pretty good scrapes. Um, you can see my knees still got a little bit of a scab there. Um, not too bad, but more embarrassing than anything. But it let me know that my body was very tired. And it's a loop. There was no way out. I had to finish, so I kept going. And I got to this really long climb and like could barely move. I'm like, this is great. How am I supposed to make 13 and a half miles when I'm on to like mile four and can barely, can barely ride my bike? So I kept going and I kept going and I got <clears throat> to mile seven and miles seven through 10, fortunately, were pretty easy. They were more flowy, a little faster, not quite so much climbing. And so I made it miles seven through 10 really easily. And then mile 11 hit and it crushed me. Like every muscle in my quads started to cramp. And 
I laugh at it now, but it was no laughing matter at the time. It was painful. So I had to stop. I, I had some food in my, in my camel pack, and so I ate and I drank some water, but I didn't have any electrolytes, unfortunately. So I had to rest, and I rested up, and I got to a point where I could keep going. But between miles 11 and 13 and a half, so miles 11 and the finish, um, I was wrecked. My body was like, you can't go any further. I was looking for a way out, and I, and I kicked into my mental skills. And I thought, okay, cool. My body is shot. How am I going to make it through to this? I knew I'd make it through to the finish. I had plenty of time. Like it's a 12 hour day and I was maybe into, you know, hour four. And so <clears throat> I looked inside, I thought about what I could do. And the thing that came to mind was to chip away. The thought that came to my mind was chip away. So I kept chipping away and doing as much as I could until the cramps would kick in in my quads again. And then the cramps started going down my leg into my calves. Like, it was like I didn't have a single electrolyte in my entire body. It was that bad. Um, and again, it was because I wasn't physically prepared and going a decent first lap kind of tricked me into thinking I could keep going. And it was, it was a good lesson. It was a really good lesson because I got to use mental skills to get me through the last three and a half miles of this race. And by chipping away and listening to my body and resting when I had to, there was times when the cramps were so bad, I just had to rest. And it was funny because I would be resting along the side of the trail and people would come riding by really fast and be like, hey, you're doing a great job. I'm like, I'm doing a great job at what, sitting here? And I just kind of laugh at myself and, and uh, like actually be pretty impressed at these people who are really, really good at mountain biking. In fact, the winners, I think, did nine or 10 laps. Nine or 10 laps. It's like 120 miles and 12,000 feet of climbing. Like it was a ridiculous, a ridiculous number of miles and, and feet of elevation. And so I would just sit and be really impressed with all these people going by and then when my body felt okay, I would keep going and I would get a little bit further and a little bit further and a little bit further. And then <clears throat> as I came up the stretch towards the, the final, the, the finish line, the announcer's like, oh, and here comes Ryan Hadlock from Highland, Utah, finishing up another lap. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm just going to love this and accept it and, and be okay with the cheers of people that are along the side of the path. Because if they knew, if they had any idea what I just went through to even go this far on this second lap, second lap, the winners are doing nine or 10 laps. I'm on my second lap. So I'm just kind of taking it with a light heart, but kind of impressed that I let my mental skills take over to get me through the final three miles. And of course, as a mental performance coach, the thought came to mind of all my athletes that I work with. And those moments that we get to, whether it be in practice or in a game or in a tournament, like the girls from Summit where I, where I coach um, some club basketball were just at a tournament. And I think I saw that they had played five games in one day. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I saw that they played five or six games in a single day. And I think about what their bodies must feel like after that many games and how I felt on this second lap of this race, of this El Doce race. And there is a point where your mind can override your body and your mind can allow you to continue on. There are some times when your mind is like, hey man or girl, you're not, you're not gonna make it. This is too hard. This hurts too much. This is too painful. Um, you've gotta stop. You've gotta, you've gotta quit. And when you have the mental skills, the mental fortitude, the mental ability to work through that and to continue, you can continue to perform at a very high level. You really have to practice this. This is not something that you can just do on the side of the road. I've practiced my mental skills for years and years now. And so when, I, when my body completely hit the wall in this mountain bike race, my mind kicked in of what can I do to finish? 
And the same thing can happen for you athletes. When you hit the wall, when you bonk, when you've been playing for so long, when you've been practicing for so many hours, what can you do to continue to perform at a high level so that those last few minutes, those last few games, those last few reps don't cause you to crash? You can still perform at a very high level all the way through that last absolute second even though you might feel like your body is going to absolutely collapse. And what it boils down to is your mind's ability to override your body. Your mind wants to protect you. Your mind wants to take the easy route or take the safe route so that you don't hurt, so you don't feel pain, so that you don't struggle, so that you're not um, suffering. So if you can override that, if you can have the mental skill to create a space for yourself to continue. Make a little game within a game like I did. For me, it was chipping away. It was just doing as much as I could until my body said stop for a second. I would rest, I would get back on my bike and then I would keep going and I would chip away until I got done with this race, with this second lap. And then I just sat and enjoyed watching my brother and and nephew continue for the rest of the day, Um, which was super awesome, like I said. So for you athletes, The lesson here is there are going to be moments when your body is tired and you're worn out and you feel like quitting. You have more work to do. There's more to go. There's um, three minutes left in the game and it's close. There's um, five more reps in this set. There's um, half an hour more in this practice and it's important to be prepared. You can create a game within the game, a game within the moment to keep yourself going. It's one more rep, one more rep. I can do one more rep. I can go two more minutes, two more minutes. And you do that over and over and over again until you complete the task, until you successfully finish what it is that you have set out to do. And then as you're able to do that, your threshold for continuing, your threshold for grit, your threshold to perform under duress, your your threshold of being able to perform when you're tired, when you feel weak, when you feel beat down, when you feel maybe um, some pain, Um, your threshold rises. Your ability to keep going rises so that the next practice, the next set, the next game becomes easier and easier and easier until you can go multiple games, multiple sets, multiple practices, whatever you need to do to support yourself, support your team, to live up to your own expectations, whatever it might be, you can do it more and more because of your mental skill. So think about that. Think what you can do to improve your mental skill threshold to get you through those tough times. If you want to work on it, if you want some additional skills, um, Around that, you can DM me, you can get on the website at apexmpc.com, fill out the form to set up a time with me to meet. We can do some sessions, we can do individual, we can do with your team, coaches. Team sessions are awesome to get all of your players on the same page. So connect with me, let's get to work, and let's raise that threshold for your ability to perform no matter what the situation. Okay, thanks guys.